Oh, hello. Welcome to Not Another Whiskey Show Laboratories, where I'm excited to bring you a very special edition of an AI-enhanced Not Another Whiskey Show. Now, I know that seems like a lot of BS, but let me explain myself because I'm super excited to show you how we can use this technology to improve our bourbon experience. Well, if you're like me, you want to try all the bourbons out there. And it's just not possible because they're expensive and they literally come out with a new one practically every day, it seems. So what are the ones that are the most tempting? Well, for me, it's become cask finishes. Now, I don't know why, but it's just the idea that if you've got a good bourbon, you can make it even more exciting and better by adding something to this cask. It's just like, keep the party going. But these represent some of the most expensive drinking in the whole bourbon game. And it's kind of questionable to me actually how much you're getting. Now, if you tuned into one of my previous episodes, you might have seen my less than stellar review of this new Lou maple barrel finished cask. And I just really wanted to love this. And it's got me thinking, can we use technology to reverse engineer what's going on inside of the barrel to maybe do this at home? Now, again, purists out there might say, you're just trying to make flavored whiskey, just add the stuff to it yourself. And I mean, maybe that's the truth. Maybe I am looking for a flavored whiskey. But when I spend 30 or 40 extra dollars on the same juice, well, I'm expecting a difference. So if I can't get it that way, I'm going to make it. Well, well I'm going to post the chat that I had with ChatGPT so you can see all of this, not only to see my calculations and the conversation, but to learn how to interact with this if you ever want to do it on your own. I'm releasing it to the public, I'm not charging anything for you, my dear viewer. So let's talk about the process, how we might be able to calculate all this, because it's actually pretty straightforward. Let's start with the barrel. Well, we need the interior surface area of that barrel as a start. ChatGPT fortunately has that, and it's somewhere around 20,948 centimeters squared. Now, in terms of all that, you can do the math, but it does give the formulas for you to review. This is now, truthfully, more of a cylinder. You could say a barrel is a bit of an odd shape, and I've gone down the chat GPT rabbit holes trying to calculate this. And let me tell you, folks, in the end, it doesn't make a super significant difference. We're coming down to just kind of very infinitesimal quantities. But now that we have the interior surface area, we can start to say, well, how much maple syrup or any of these finishes could possibly get in? So at that point, we have to talk about absorption. And absorption has a few different features. Of course, there's the porosity, the weather, and the material itself. But, um, you know, I'm not a wood expert, and I don't have any sort of distillery experience to tell me the range of the values of how much wood typically gets penetrated. I know it's called, like, the devil's cut, the stuff in the wood. Um, but I don't know how far it gets in. I don't even really know how thick a stave is. So. I've estimated anywhere from two millimeters all the way up to two centimeters. Now, that's pretty big. So I took the final average as a median, actually, of it, and that's about 12.5. Um, now, that's the maximum depth it could possibly get in. Um, you might say you don't really need to define an upper limit, but <clears throat> now, more than the volume that we're allowing, it's how fast it'll get in. So what I did was basically used a 1 to 5% per day infusion calculation that's basically sliding over time to say this is how much maple syrup could possibly get in over that three-month period. I said there's going to be a six-month, or sorry, six-month infusion time of maple syrup or cognac or rum or, you know, honey, whatever you want, and then we will have three months to pull it out. And so you could play with those values in the final calculation. But um, then, so now we have basically the amount of maple syrup's total volume that could get into the barrel. Well, it's starting to come home. From there, you put all the bourbon back that you want to finish. 
and we have to calculate how much of the honey is going to get out of the barrel or maple syrup into the, the bourbon that's being finished. Well, for that, I used about a 1% to 5% sliding scale, so it's going to decrease over time for those three months. And we end up pulling out a certain quantity into the barrel. And then from there, it's just division to say, well, if there's this many milliliters per you know, gallon, essentially, what would that translate down to 750? And so I am pleased to say that fortunately, ChatGPT did the math and we have calculations for basically all of the major finishing types that I think people want. And we're going to put that in the comments, but we've got cognac, honey, rum, and maple syrup. And so what it comes down to is actually these are very small amounts that get pulled out into the wood, that get re-put into the actual um, product in the end of the line. It's, it's almost disappointingly small, so that's why I want to test it with you live. Okay, according to the chart, maple syrup for a 187 milli milliliter, we should add 0.77 grams. So, uh, yeah, not, not a lot. Um, that's that's going to be pretty light. Uh, I'm just double-checking that math because it's like a little disappointingly small if you think about it. Um, we're talking under a gram, one gram of maple syrup. I encourage you to check the math, check my logic, but basically this formula makes sense. Figure out the size of the barrel. Figure out how much syrup could get into the barrel. Figure out how much syrup could come out of the barrel. Then divide that quantity down into the different sizes we drink. Now, one last little twist is you may know the... <clears throat> we're going to do this by weight. You may know the density of... Um, water is one mil per uh, gram. In this case, we're going to estimate alcohol to be slightly less at, oh, about 0.95 milliliters a gram. So for 187 milliliters, I hope I have that in here, I'm going to need 170 7.65 grams. Oop. 130, 50, 160. Okay, I need 177. I'm at 172. 174, 175, <clears throat> 177. Now, this isn't a precision scale, and we're about to get a little bit jankier because I can't measure hardly less than a gram of this. What I'm really excited to get into the whistle pig maple finished maple syrup uh, finished in their rye barrels. So this is a fresh syrup crack. Um, so hopefully it'll cooperate with us guys. All right. <clears throat> mm, let's do a quick smell. Ooh. Wow. Okay. We will be able to taste. I'm pretty sure about that. It's got, of course, that delicious maple syrup backing. That's, of course, the first flavors. But there's a spice. A real kind of rye spice. If you know it, it smells bready. It smells almost peppery. Not an aggressive or like tequila way even, but just a really nice extra 
earthy element. Okay, so I'm going for about a gram. That's a little too much, but who cares? Okay, just about one gram in. And that was it. That's it, guys. That is not a lot of action in a lot of whiskey, I must admit. Now, people will say you need to give this time to incorporate, and that's true. I'm, I'm noticing the density is a little different. Um, but let's go ahead and do a little side-by-side. -side. Now, it occurs to me I didn't get a Glen for this other guy, and I'm going to do that. But thanks to YouTube magic, you won't notice the difference. So I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back, YouTube. So let's go ahead and do a very non good way to mix this up. I'm going to do a couple things that hopefully doesn't shock anybody. Now, I've heard the guy, uh, the master distiller at Woodford Reserve, say that if you're going to even add water to your whiskey to give it a few minutes, like as much as 10 to 15 for it to incorporate because there's chemical reactions occurring. And, I mean, obviously he's going to know far better about whiskey, but, you know, for the purposes of this, if it can't show itself in the first few minutes, I don't care. All right. So, on the right is the Maple Syrup Enhanced AI Chat GPT version. Uh, based on the Smooth Ambler Old Scout High Rye Five Year Single Barrel Bourbon that's coming in at 55.7. Now, of course, there is single barrel and rickhouse variation and things like that, but still, I think it's pretty well accounted for. Nulu is boasting a 59%, also likely High Rye Mash Bill. Okay, Nulu. Hmm. All right, there is the golden graham cracker honey. There is an earthy maple sweetness. I think in my initial reviews, I wasn't really catching that. But maybe it's just having smelled a bunch of maple syrup, it's coming out a little bit more prominent. Hot, though. That, that smells hot. The alcohol is just jumping up and singeing my nose. Okay, so this is the AI Enhanced. Mm. Now, I know this Old Scout bottle to be significantly more graham crackery and earthy and leathery um, than the Nulu, but, you know, the sweetness is there. Um, it really, it's not going to have that integrated flavor that you get from, you know, the, the months in the barrel. This is, again, moments in the glass, but still I think you are seeing parallels. Getting, if I reach, I'm gonna say I can get a hint of maple, but all right. Um, gosh, I guess I ought to try the new one first. Um, tell me in the comments if I did in the wrong order, or if you have a special bourbon that's been finished that you like, that you swear can't be made this way, or you're going to try. All right, cheers to you guys. Here's the new stuff. This is my first drink of the day, so I am getting a lot of proof, um, but... What's really interesting is, you know, some of that beastie, leathery, just grain forwardness 
a, a barrel like this at this age is, I don't want to say gone, but I mean, there's something about pouring sugar water from a tree into that that helps. Um, you know, we're not in old-fashioned territory or anything by any means, okay? It's not like we just made ourselves a cocktail. But, I mean, I will tell you I like it more than I did for this, this bottle as it was. Okay, now the new Lou revisited. Oof. Oof. That drink's closer to scotch, honestly. With those barrel notes, they're coming in with a char. Almost a peat. Almost like a peaty heaviness to that. Really gets uh, kind of that hug going in the chest, that hooser hug, but... Yeah. You know, I want to say that... I would like to believe that this is better actual bourbon for the money and that we haven't figured out a, a little hack here. But, you know, I can't honestly say that the difference is that significant now. Going back. Wow. I mean, guys, I, I had... Drank a lot of this, but I was sort of forcing myself, to be honest. I mean, it was not pleasant. And I'm going to probably kill that this bottle here um, this week. So don't get grossed out, but let's just taste the unfinished product. Well... I want to say they, they pulled a better barrel, that's for sure, um, in my opinion, than whatever Nulu started out with. But, you know, on the nose, the maple syrup one smells just a lot better. I don't know if it's psychological or what, but... Yeah, I mean, the sweetness is there in the finish. What's the final recap? Guys, I think it's well worth trying these formulas out. You know, if you were really going to do it proper justice, add your materials, give it at least a day to marry up and um, come together. You know, this was done really on the spot to show you guys sort of how the science behind this is working. But... I think that, you know, we got to use our, we got to come together and use our heads and, and not let these marketers just fleece us. Um, you know, definitely these are different bourbons. The time in the barrel has done something. Is it a measurable improvement in quality, experience, or enjoyment? I don't think so. So, cheers to you. Uh, dear viewer, if you made it this far, help us grow the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, you know, we're new and trying to share all of these cool insights with you. So I uh, definitely appreciate you watching. Otherwise, take care of yourself, drink responsibly, be good to each other, and uh, do tune in next time. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. <clears throat>